Eu estou aqui na Campus Party 2013, 8 mil campuseiros, tá lotado de gente, os computadores tudo personalizados. É a primeira vez que eu entro aqui mesmo, super legal. E agora eu estou indo fazer uma entrevista com o Pete Lomas, que é o cofundador do Raspberry Pi. Qual exatamente foi sua participação no desenvolvimento do Raspberry Pi? In the development of the Raspberry Pi, I came on board, um, it was 2007 and 2008, when Evan Upton had the idea. Um, I came on board a little bit later, because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit different to the other guys, that I spend my career is electronics, and designing electronics for people. And I was with, um, a chap called Alan Mycroft. I didn't know who he was. I was sat next to him at a presentation in London. And we started talking about um, an education, small educational computer. And uh, I said, that's a really great idea. Do you need any help? And he said, well, yeah. So I went to Cambridge and I was just sucked in. It's just such a fantastic idea that the guys came up with. And I have just helped with getting from an idea through to the final Raspberry Pi. Why Raspberry It's a very good question. It's the same reason probably there isn't documentation for a lot of other uh, countries, is that the Raspberry Pi is a charitable foundation. Really, we only have a small number of trustees who all have day jobs. So I run an electronics company when I'm not on holiday here in Brazil doing things for Raspberry Pi um, and so it's not been until almost now that we've had the facility to start recruiting people to start to help we've had to rely we've had to rely on our community to help us with the work now we have quite a strong Portuguese community we have a unique area on the website It's all communicated in Portuguese, and I'm quite sure, in the very short order, there will tra be translations of everything. Você planejou o Raspberry Pi para ser usado pelos estudantes. É, qual foi a faixa etária que você tinha em mente, colegial, universitários? Yes, it's really, uh, it's really quite odd. We, we started, Raspberry Pi started, so the very first idea was to give it to undergraduate students at university and say, hey guys, take the Raspberry Pi, go away from the summer, when you come back to start your university, then do some, have, you should have done something useful with this. It dawned on us very quickly that Raspberry Pi doesn't have an age limit, either at the top or at the bottom. We have seven-year-old children playing with Raspberry Pi and Scratch, and we have eight-year-olds using it to do other experiments with ham radios and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we've got a full spectrum and it's now become tremendously inclusive. So yes, day one we had an idea that we had a, a target and we had to change our idea because we were just wrong. What do you think about the future of Raspberry Pi in Brazil? I think that Raspberry Pi has got a tremendous future in Brazil. I mean, I just walked around with um, a little Raspberry Pi logo I was stopped. I couldn't get from one side of campus party to the other. I was stopped by 10 people saying, hey, you, Mr. Raspberry Pi, are you going to talk? Let me, and the people wanted to show me things that they'd done okay with a PC, and they want to do it with a Raspberry Pi. And it's absolutely brilliant. I think there's a fantastic future for Raspberry Pi in Brazil. O Raspberry Pi vem com problemas básicos. Você tem planos de criar algo mais avançado? As, as a foundation, we're not um, planning too much more. We're trying to concentrate on making what we've got run better and run faster. But what we have done is we've opened a shop, a bit like an app store, that allows you, well, it's exactly like an app store, that allows you to download things for Raspberry Pi that other people can contribute. They can contribute them either free or they can be paid. So depending on what the content is, you can download it. We're going to see a lot 
of material coming that way onto the Raspberry Pi. As escolas distribuem o Windows de graça e nós usamos porque os professores acham que vamos usar produtos da Microsoft no trabalho. Por que você projetou o Raspberry Pi em Linux? Ok. That is really a, a complex and evolved question, but in essence, the Linux is an open system. So you can start at the top and you can work your way down through the layers and understand as much or as little as you want to. And you can then modify it and you can change it to suit what you want to do. So the object that we had was not to teach people how to type, how to make pretty documents, all the sort of things that you will do with an application, but to look inside and look, actually look at how these applications do what they do and potentially modify them. And one of the great targets for doing that is games. You look at a game, you say, ah, oh, I'd like to modify it. I'd like it to do something different. And so you can incrementally change the game and see what effect it has and learn the process of how these things are made. That's why we chose Linux. Also because, you know, if we'd chosen Microsoft, they would give it to free for schools, but if you wanted it at home, or you wanted it in a hack space, then they would charge you money for it. And also the computer that it runs on is very expensive, mm -hmm. compared to a Raspberry Pi. I think that I'm a student of the high school that is thinking about putting a Raspberry Pi in my PC. And are you ready to go to the Brazil and do a conference in my school? If I can with work commitments, I'd love to.